what's going on guys welcome back to another fishing with separate episode today we're at this ledge spot here we just got hit heavy with a storm yesterday so the water is super high it's pretty murky too um that's why i decided not to try to fly fish this spot today we're gonna stick strictly with like uh, spinners and phobes of such uh nature and we're gonna try to cast out see if maybe we can get some life out of this murky water um if we can catch something today we are gonna do a catching cook that's if we can catch some but uh the water is running really fast through here so what i think i'm gonna do is i've been here before so i kind of know where the ledge goes um, i know some fish like to sit out to the left here but what i'm gonna do is i'm probably gonna pass up and try to reel it in through this fast water but i bet you this nice sized trout kind of sitting in this fast water here but that's enough for everyone on i'm gonna get you guys on the hat and we're gonna cast out in here and see if we can get any luck there we go boys fish on that's another nice brown oh we got a jumper there's a nice bite a beautiful brown trout all right so usually i start with the micro rod but today we're gonna start out with the big rod because uh, with heavy rain like this, there could be some bigger trout that have moved, moved downstream with the fast water. So I got the bigger phobe tied on here. It's just a gold phobe. And I actually have some like weird cotton stuff on here from a couple weeks ago when I was fishing. So we're just gonna pick that right off like that. But I think what I'm going to try to do is I might try to get out on these rocks right here in front of me. That way I can cast this out a little bit further. But I'm going to cast straight out and kind of let it sink maybe a little bit. Because I don't know how deep these trout will be sitting. I know for sure that there's trout at this spot. I'm just not sure how well they're going to be able to see this phobe and this murky water. That's why I went with kind of a gold phobe i might just jig it a little bit i don't want to bring it too fast because uh these trout these trout might have a hard time biting something that they can't really see that easily if you guys can see here there maybe is like two feet of visibility so if a trout can if we can kind of get it close to a trout they should want to bite it especially after a good rainstorm like we just had right, we're way out there let it sink a little bit i was kind of jigging it but i might give it like a slow retrieve it's gonna run really slow across that water i'm gonna stand over here i'm just gonna cast across this fast water now i was kind of casting it upstream i'm just gonna cast it straight across this fast water and just reel it across real slow yeah, it's pretty hard to see this in the water. I might try the micro rod in a little bit. Because the micro rod has the silver and blue. So maybe if we can get some color up in this water. Something might be able to see it a little bit easier. Alright, let's try out the micro fold here. We'll see if this, uh, this silver and blue can get some life out of the water. I mean, this water is just super murky right now. I'm gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna cast right on the left side of this fast water. It's kind of calm through here. And with looking at how fast this current is, I don't know if you guys can see the cyclones in the water, but that's gonna make it pretty tricky for a fish to be in there. So they could be just hanging out to the side. We're gonna take a couple more casts here. And if we don't get any luck, we're gonna go try a spot that uh, we've done two episodes on. Just cause I know that there's a, a good amount of fish in that spot. I mean, there's a couple of good fish in here, but uh, not enough to like, with how big it is in here. I mean, it's just really hard to pinpoint where exactly they would be. So we might have to try to go to the other spot. I'm gonna give it a couple casts up over here. We're gonna go upstream to the other spot that we've been to before. 
We're gonna see if maybe we can get luck up there because uh, it's just really murky and running pretty fast here. And I don't think there's that many fish just sitting in here right now. So we're gonna take a little drive and we'll see what kind of luck we can get. All right, we made it to the other spot. So I was gonna go over on that side because usually when the water is not this high, there's a nice island over there that you can kind of stand on. But when I was walking over on the bridge here, I saw that that spot is all flooded out. So our best chance is to come over here where this big rock is and try to catch a fish over here. And I'm curious, I might take a couple casts up here. Now, if we catch a fish up in this area, we can't keep it because that's part of dog. Either that or above that kind of dam is. But I want to take a couple casts. See if maybe there's some trout in here. There might be a couple browns or maybe some uh, brookies sitting right up here in this water. The water up here in this river versus down here is a lot clearer. Oh, we got a fish on. That's a fish on, boys. Guys, I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, that's a decent fish, boys. Oh, that's a beautiful brown trout. Look at that brown trout, boys. There we go, boys. He's a slippery guy. <laughs> oh, there he goes. All right. Well, he might have knocked himself out. Oh, we're good. <laughs> that guy was a very lively. Yeah, we couldn't keep him anyways, I don't think, because this part of the river here i think is still considered part of this river i don't think it's until down there that is considered the other water body and there's the actual poster stating the regulations so the only thing we can use here is artificial and we have to catch and release at this spot funny thing is i was only reeling for a couple seconds when that fish was on and he's kind of sitting way over there now there is brown trout up in that river, but it is possible that that brown trout swam up while this river was high. But to be honest, I was not expecting that good of a trout to be sitting right up in there like that. But I have noticed that brown trout seem to love the fog a lot more than rainbow trout do. Which is kind of funny. You don't think there'd be a preference between trout. You would think that they'd just all be eating the same kind of thing but it doesn't really seem that way. That was a really nice trout though. Once we start casting down that way, I'm kind of hoping that we can catch one so we can do a catch and cook. I'm gonna take a couple more casts. All right, I think we're gonna start moving down. I'd like to catch a trout for the catch and cook. And I'm hoping that's not the only trout we catch today. The hard part is I don't know if there's really an easy way to get over but right down there, I can kind of cast there. But right down there is where we can keep a trout. So we'll just cast from up here. And I bet you they're sitting right in that hole. There has to be a couple at least. All right, well, first cast with the big rod. We got stuck in the tree. So looks like we're going back to the micro, which we had a bite on the micro already. So we might as well just keep using it. But I just got to be super careful of how I'm casting. All right, I think I'm going to try to make my way up on the bank here. I'm not sure how soupy this mud is. Oh, it's not that bad. Okay. All right, yeah, we can make our way up in this bushy area. There we go. Yeah, this is great. Okay, this is perfect, guys. This is plenty enough to cast from here. And I think we can definitely get a trout out in this body of water. See if we can get us a trout for a catching cook here, boys. So I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but this, you can see where the mud is meeting the clear water from the other river. And I can't help but wonder if the trout are sitting along that, that stretch. Cause I'd almost think that the trout would be sitting in that clear water. I am gonna try to take, what in the world? Did I just catch some fishing line? All right, folks, we got tangled up a little bit, so I had to retie. 
but it wouldn't hurt to retie anyways because that other trout was pretty decent so definitely didn't hurt to uh get it all retied on i kind of like how it's kind of clear on this side but i don't know we could get a pretty decent fish by getting out there in that deep stuff <clears throat> there could be trout just sitting out there but it is also possible that they're sitting right here in this clear stuff uh, that's pretty good cast we cleared pretty far over there so this is all pretty clear through here so we might have a good chance <clears throat> all right we're gonna try out in the big river again the current's running pretty fast the visibility isn't too horrible in that murky water so i might just try to get it way out there and just let it sink i really don't want to have to end the day with just having that one trout from up there i really like to get another trout if i have it down here it's it really does stink too that that one well it's like maybe 40 feet that one 40 foot stretch is the difference between being able to keep a trout or not all right so i decided to give down here a little break we're gonna head back upstream and see if maybe we can get some more luck down here which again sadly we can't keep nothing that we catch down this way but it'll still be fun to you know catch some fish down this way even if we can't keep them i really do feel like they're just sitting right up in there so i see like a deep hole and i see if i can cast right out to it so right there is some pretty fast water where I'm talking about is right about where I'm pointing. It's deep through there and the water is not as strong. Right there, that's where we want to be. And I'm just going to bring it right across. Oh, I think we might have just gotten nibbled. I don't know. Yep. There was like three trout right here that followed it in. Yeah, we're right back out where we want to be. I think there's a lot more fish in here than I thought. Oh, that's a good spot to be. I'd like to try it kind of up where it's calm there too. So I wonder if there's any fish just hanging out up there. This looks great right through here. Make sure that we don't spook any trout. Right over there is super deep. I'm gonna take a few casts up here too. It's usually shallow up here, but with all this rain, it uh, kind of flooded it out. I'm not seeing any follows up here, guys, so we might be out of luck when it comes to up here, that is. We're gonna head back down this way. I don't think there's anything up here. I think our best luck it's just right here underneath this kind of dam right here you know and i could be wrong too i very i mean it could be that i could keep fish after the dam that's a really good chance too i might read the paper that's over here on the regulations to see if that might be the case because it very well could be Uh, the rag's way up there. I might just check it on the way out. But we're going to take some casts down here. Didn't get any more bites down that way. I'm just going to read this right here. Dang. Alright guys, I just read the regulations. It looks like we could have kept that trout that we first caught. Dang, that stinks. All right, well, we'll pass back out. We'll try again there. All right, so pretty much what the sign said is that anywhere from the bottom, from the edge of this bridge 
all the way upstream to another dam is where the regulations are. So that one fish that we had caught that was at the edge of this bridge, we could have actually caught and did a catch and cook. So <clears throat> I might try to catch another trout from in this hole, this hole now that I know that, because there very well could be some more there and I could try a different bait. We could also try back down there again, but we're limited on time. I don't know if you guys can see all the rain clouds coming. So we're kind of limited on how much time left we have fishing. So I'll give it a couple more casts here. We'll see if we can catch anything where we caught that other brown at. And if we can't, we'll try down there a little bit longer. If we don't have any luck, we might have to call it. Cause it's gonna start raining soon. So we got our jerk bait all tied on. Now I think if we can get it pretty far over there, we can just kind of drag it through the water. There we go, boys. Fish on. That's another fish on, boys. Now we're talking business. Oh, that's another nice brown. Oh, we got a jumper. Let's get him up on the bank. Nice. There we go, boys. It's another nice, beautiful brown trout. We're going to get him up on the bank. We're going to be keeping him. We need to get something just to bonk him out real quick. All right, guys. We got ourselves a rock. We're just going to give him a nice little bonk. We're going to put him out of his misery. All right, guys. Here we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wash him off real quick. There we go, boys. A beautiful brown trout there's definitely some good meat on him so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the knife out we're gonna start filleting and I think we're gonna do a catch and cook since the weather cleared up on us a little bit and we're gonna you go ahead and use this rock as our cutting board <clears throat> so with this trout I think what I'm gonna do I'm going to take the head right on off of them. the butthole straight up and we're gonna finish taking the head right off all right there's our head and if you guys are new to my channel then you don't know yet that uh, I like to take the heads home for my dogs and I like to freeze them throw that out there for the crawdads I'm gonna go ahead and score right down the kidney we're gonna go wash this blood out all right there we have it we have the head off we got all the nasty gunk out of the stomach area all the guts and garbage out of there now we do have some pretty nice pink meat. It's definitely not too bad. I might give it just one more wash to get the slime coat off. And then we're gonna get the stove all fired up and get the pan nice and hot. All right, I'm gonna set the trout right here on my bag. Let's go ahead and get the stove all set up. All right, 
So I need a nice flat spot to cook this trout. So I decided to move the catch and cook up to the truck. There was another guy fishing down there and I didn't want to disturb him and his piece by, you know, talking and cooking fish, you know. So I decided to come up here. We got a bike path right here, so it's not a big worry. Plus, it also started to rain. So I wanted to be able to get somewhere where I could pack up quickly. If I needed to. Get the stove all kicked on. Let's go ahead and get our pan out. I got a little bit of sand in there from being down by the water. But that's no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and get some oil in this pan just to start getting it hot. And then while that oil is getting hot, we're going to put some scores and we're going to season our fish. Make sure this oil is nicely and nice and spread around here. So our fish isn't going to quite fit in the pan, guys. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to cut it in two pieces. Like so. We're also going to make sure to score our fish. That way it doesn't curl. We got some scores on our fish. Now this is a brand new seasoning that I had just gotten not long ago. And I'm really excited to see how it tastes on fish. Our oil is nice and heated up right now. Be generous on the seasoning. Pat it down, make sure it gets on those creases. Make sure to get it on the inside of the meat too. Oh yeah, you hear that oil crackling? So this piece is going to take longer to cook, so we're going to go ahead and get that right in the oil. We'll go ahead and start seasoning up our tail piece. Make sure to get it nice and packed in. If you guys are wondering what this spice is called, it's the Kansas City Barbecue Rub. Salt, pepper, and mustard seed. I haven't tried this seasoning on any meat yet before, so it should be interesting to see how it tastes. Trying to be careful not to get in the way of any bikers that are coming by too this is kind of strange too because i'm kind of a i'm a pretty reserved guy so kind of being out in the public eye doing this is kind of a little strange for me so if at any point i'm a little awkward during this just know that's because i'm pretty self-reserved so i don't really like to be out there that much Ooh, look at that fish we're going to throw a little bit more seasoning on that puppy, at least on this side. I want to get it down in that meat a little bit more. This fish is looking fantastic though. Throw a bit more seasoning on this side as well. Now that the meat's kind of spreading apart, I can kind of get it in those in those cuts that we made. For a second, I thought I was worried. I thought I left my black rod down there. Luckily, we didn't. So I'm pretty surprised that the bikers that went through here didn't say anything because there's a lot of sensitive people in my state. So I wouldn't be surprised if they lost it that I was. Uh, catching and killing and cooking fish but we're out in public we're on a public bike path so even though it says no motor vehicles you don't want to go on motor vehicles that way hmm. but we're good right here this is kind of like a parking spot let me make sure to keep flipping our fish here this fish is looking fantastic make sure to get the oil spread around the pan again What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to put our seasoning back in the bag. 
our oil is already back in there. Well, I'm gonna finish with cooking too. I'm gonna put the rods away. Let's try flipping it again just to make sure we're not burning one side. All right, we're gonna keep it in that. It's nice grease for now. We're gonna move it in there. All right, while that cools down, we're gonna take care of our bag and our poles. Alrighty, so we're on the driver's side. The pan's still a little bit hot, but we're gonna start eating anyways. Just look at how good this fish looks. Man, that just looks absolutely fantastic. So I think I'm actually just gonna set you guys. Let's set you right there for now. This pan is super hot, so I'm trying to figure out how to eat this without absolutely burning the living daylights out of myself. We got a little fin on here I want to peel off. Ooh. That seasoning is actually really good. I thought this seasoning would be like a little bit spicy, but it's not spicy at all. It has like a really nice sweet to it, which actually ties in really great with the fish. Because uh, this brown trout had some pretty sweet pink meat, so it actually ties in really good together. Wow, I'm actually really impressed with this. This fish tastes fantastic. As usual, you always got the pin bones. That's just what comes with eating trout like this. And you're always gonna have the pin bones. I mean, look at that bite. There's pin bones everywhere in this. That's right, they're just, they're coming right out like it's nothing, so. We're just gonna peel these bones right out. And there's a nice bite. A beautiful brown trout. That seasoning is absolutely phenomenal. If you guys enjoy fishing and you've never done a catch and cook before, just get out there and do it, guys. I mean, the stuff for a catch and cook is so cheap. I mean, I got that stove. I think I paid like $25 for it. And then you just get those little propane tanks. You can get like two for seven bucks. They're so cheap. And then, uh, all you really need to get from there is just get yourself a pan, get some seasoning. You can do butter or olive oil. I use olive oil just because it's easier to carry around like that. So, but anyways, like I was saying, just get out there and try it. It doesn't hurt just to try it out. And if you've never had trout before, you definitely got to try it out because trout is absolutely delicious. There's so much flavor on that skin, especially with all the seasoning, but so much flavor. All right, guys, I'm going to keep eating this trout. I just want to thank you guys so much if you guys have made it to the end of this video um if you guys do like these videos and you want to see more catch and cooks just like this please make sure to drop a like comment and subscribe i really do appreciate you guys watching and sticking through this whole video and i want to thank all of you for supporting this channel we just hit 100 subs on this channel and we hit it so fast so i can't thank you all enough for that but thank you guys for joining me today on this adventure this catch and cook was absolutely phenomenal. I wasn't sure if we were gonna catch fish today with the first spot, but we went to the second spot and we got it done. So anyways, thanks again for watching guys. I'm gonna finish this trout off and we'll catch you in the next episode. Fishing with Zephyr, we'll catch you next Sunday.